Welcome to my Patreon page. This uh, conversation is with uh, two of my subscribers, Chuck and Sharon. They recently purchased a home in the villages and uh, they were kind enough to sit down and have a conversation with me of the things that um, they liked, the things that they don't like, and um, some of the ins and outs of purchasing a home here. Uh, this is their opinions. Um, I, uh, I didn't go over anything with them. This is them talking straight off the shoulder to you. This uh, video will be exclusive to my Patreon page for a while before I will share it with my YouTube page. So you have the right to see this firsthand. Hi everybody, I'm over at Chuck and Sharon's. They're new to the villages. They've been checking the place out for a year or so anyway. We're here enjoying a brew. Thanks Chuck and Sharon for the beer. You're welcome. And we're gonna ask their opinions about everything because I know some of you have sent me emails thinking that I'm a little biased about stuff. And maybe I am, I don't know that I am, don't know that I ain't, but we're gonna ask their questions about things. This is Chuck, this is Sharon. I they they're both from Alabama. No, no wait. No wait. Go ahead. I'm from Chicago. <laughs> I'm not from Alabama. <laughs> They've been living in Alabama. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. oh that's right. There's a difference. I'm from where we've been living. Forced to live in Alabama. <laughs> and what did you do in Alabama when you were living there? Either or, both of you. Go ahead. Well, I retired from the army. <clears throat> and uh, worked for a couple of different government contractors in Alabama. Um, Alabama, northern Alabama and Huntsville is a very uh, government oriented town, so that's how I ended up there. What do you do, Sharon? Well, actually, I work for the government, and I'm one of those lucky people that get to work from home. So I work for the U.S. Department of Education, and I manage adult education grants from my home office. And you still work full And time. I still work full-time. Okay. Do you enjoy living here since you moved here? It's a different kind of life mm -hmm. living here. Um, coming from North Alabama, uh, the neighborhoods, the homes, the communities, I think has a different culture. And one of the things I think that I have to do is to get used to the culture and the climate. When I say climate, I don't mean weather. I mean the climate of the, the community here. And But I believe I'm really, really going to enjoy it once I settle down and find my rhythm. I find that if you talk about the culture here, in my neighborhood anyway, and I know every village, the neighborhoods change dramatically, or they can. Is, uh, ours is like all over the place. We have beer day, as you well know, it's beer day. You got guys from New Jersey, from New York, Joy from California, Georgia, mm -hmm. and trust me, everybody's got different ideas about everything. And the worst thing here that I have found, well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me ask you both, how did you guys discover the villages? I actually discovered it through him. He kind of introduced me to it, so we'll talk about that. We had talked about whether we wanted to stay in the Huntsville area um, after uh, retirement or whether we wanted to look for something and basically uh, I did a lot of research we looked at I don't know probably a hundred different areas Arizona, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida just uh, all over the board, as, as most people probably do. And uh, through a, uh, just a series of uh, narrowing things down, what we wanted, uh, what we wanted to pay, what we wanted after retirement, uh, this is how we ended up where we're at. But how did you discover the villages? Oh, uh, through the internet. Uh, just by searching? And yeah, just by up. searching. And I remember <clears throat> a few years ago, they used to advertise, um, you know, during football games and this and that, their advertisements would come up. And I never gave it much thought. And through doing research, uh, 
the villages popped up on the internet and we looked at it and uh, thought, wow, this is kind of a unique place. Um, there's people here from everywhere. And uh, just like I said, through a series of, um, you know, picking and choosing, this has this, uh, what do we want? And, and basically that's how we ended up where we're at. And I think, to be perfectly honest, we stumbled upon your videos talking about the villages yeah. and all those things, and, and we kind of got interested in it. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Take the credit. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, so far since you've been here, and you've been here how long now, full-time? How long have you actually since, been? Since uh, we closed on the 10th of October, so... So you're really October. still feeling your way around a lot. Oh, so, yeah. But you've been here long enough to know. So what is your... Um, the best thing that you have found about the villages so far for, for you guys? Um, this is going to sound stupid. Um, the sunsets. <laughs> really? You enjoy the sunset? We love sitting so you out You moved on... a thousand miles to enjoy the sunset. Well, is that what it, you're telling me? It, mm, I didn't realize that's why we were moving, <laughs> but yeah, I guess I, I am saying that. Um, <laughs> We one of the things I know that I enjoy a lot is going out on the lanai, sitting out there. In I love either, lanais. Either in the mornings watching the sunrise, or sitting out there in sunset, and the sky is just quiet. brilliant, and it is extremely quiet. quiet. I'm amazed by how. Quiet you know it is. that brings an interesting question. I get a lot of emails over the past couple of years saying that they couldn't live in a patio villa, they couldn't live in a courtyard villa, because the houses are just way too close, it's got to be a lot of noise, a lot of this, a lot of that. Have you ever noticed a lot of noise or anything? Absolutely not. No. This is probably the quietest place I've ever lived. <clears throat> we thought the same thing, um, that when we moved in here, oh, the, the patio villas are going to be rented out, there'll be people throwing parties until 1 o'clock in the morning, running around <laughs> nude on the streets, it'll be crazy. And it's not been that case at all. It's uh, mostly... Uh, people who either live here full time or rent and are just, they're mature, um, they come here, they want to enjoy the golf or whatever it may be, and no, it's the quietest place <clears throat> I think both of us have ever lived. Yeah. Yeah, we found the same thing in our patio bill. We was concerned about noise and everything because mm -hmm. coming from the Midwest, the close proximity to houses, as Sue told you, is we had to get used to that idea right. mentally, I think, more than anything. That right. your neighbors is like right there. Mm -hmm. But we never had a problem with noise ever. Nobody did everything you expect them to do in the winter. Right. We didn't have. I think problem. we're the loudest ones in the corner here. <clears throat> you know, I'll play some rock and roll on the radio, and <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for somebody to show up and tell me that uh, we're too loud. So I don't know. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Uh, now that you've been here for a while and you went through the process of buying the house, putting in an offer, the financing if you did any of that, mm -hmm. the buying the furniture, setting up the appointment times, um, I don't know, all the stuff that goes into it that Sue took care of that I didn't do. <laughs> you actually admit that. I did. I didn't, I didn't do it. So, Readily he admits that. What would you say <laughs> was, was some of the frustrating thing? If somebody was coming down here to buy a new house, what would your advice be on, on some of the things to look out for, mm -hmm. to do first, to do second, whatever, the frustrating stuff? I think <clears throat> I did a lot of the, the logistical legwork mm -hmm. prior to moving. Um, since I'd been in the military, I'd moved so many times, I, I said to Sharon, I said, I know how this is going to go. Um, let me handle some of this and plan some of it. And of course, she planned <clears throat> probably most of it, but uh, we knew what we had to do. Um, leaving uh, a place, you got to sell your house. That's one logistical hurdle, if, uh, unless you're just moving down here part time. Um, getting everything switched over as far as your mail, your bank accounts, your utilities, your cable, your phone. all that, your phone, everything has to be taken into consideration. Make a list, check it twice. Um, oh, yeah, not not nice. Nice. <laughs> Most of those vendors are not nice. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go on with it. I've always said service here in most cases suck. Mm -hmm. You just got to deal with it. Well, I think the, the two things that I walked away with 
or the lessons learned was number one that you have to be diligent and you have to look for what you want and once you find it you need to be ready to make a decision. You're talking about a house. A house. I, I, Absolutely. Yes, you're exactly right. There Don't. is no, oh, let's wait. Let's, let's see what else they got. Time. We'll come back a month from now and put and in an offer. Yeah, that's not going to be happening. Yeah, a month from now, it's, um, it's already sold. We actually had three couples tell us when we moved in, ah, you moved into the house that I wanted. We put in an offer, and they didn't even respond to us. And I said, that's because they accepted ours. That's why. That's right. But, well, to but, backtrack on that a little bit, um, I had looked at the village's listings daily, mm -hmm. and I can't overemphasize that fact that you cannot uh, wait for Skip to send you a classified section in the village's newspaper and expect the house to be expect the house to be available yeah. by the time you get that mail because it probably won't be. These homes go extremely quickly; um, they get what they ask for them, mm -hmm. and. Uh, when I found that, and like I said, I, we looked for quite a long time and, and checked daily. And one day I just saw the house and uh, I said to Sharon, I said, you got to come look at this. And they had done all these upgrades and it was a corner lot and it had the vaulted ceilings. They had done the solar lights. Um, everything was, was done. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> I said, this is what they want and what are we going to offer them? So we gave them what we thought was a fair offer that same day. And come to find out, I, if we didn't do that, I don't think we would have got it because we had people come up to us afterwards who live in this same area saying they wanted this particular villa and they put in offers and never heard anything back. So right. um, uh, I guess the moral of the story is, is uh, you got to, if you want to do it, you got to move. Yeah. I've and always told people my advice was if you're going to look and you're, if you're a serious buyer, take your checkbook with you yep. and absolutely. be prepared to, to flop a check down absolutely. as soon as you find the place you want. That's yep. absolutely true. You asked one of the frustrating things about the whole process and, and uh, one of the things of course that we had to do that Chuck mentioned is that we had to sell our house in Alabama and of course we had to put that on the market after we ex made the offer and it was accepted here. But one of the things I found just really totally frustrating was that while the process in the villages seemed to be self-contained, it seemed like the right hand didn't know what the left hand was doing. Mm -hmm. So we had to talk to all these different offices yeah. about things that we had had that same conversation about earlier with another office, but we had to say it again to this other office. Mm -hmm. So it's Exactly what offices are we talking about? Well, Go when, ahead. when you have your, your, your closing, oh, well, we're going to make an offer, so we've got to get the financing in line. Okay, so we're okay. going to use this bank. Okay. Okay, Okay. they have their own closing department, so uh, closing department now. doesn't know what the bank is doing and, and the title right. and all of that. So it seemed, that was a little frustrating, and for me, uh, having not gone through a process like this before, mm -hmm. That was a little frustrating. There were times when I think we just wanted to throw the towel in and go, is it really worth it? Mm -hmm. but I've heard it this story before yeah. about different banks and the closing and the mm -hmm. dates and gets, yeah, yeah. And then we closed in the middle of a hurricane. So <laughs> that sort of complicated things a little bit. Yeah, that was a, a bit unsettling. Um, Hurricane Irma? No, Hurricane Michael. Michael. Yeah, Michael. Which one had the panhandle? <clears throat> oh, the big one. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, we actually called the closing office because we closed on the 10th of October and Michael had was either going to go through there or had gone through mm -hmm. there. I can't remember. Either which. the day before or that afternoon or and something. And I called the closing office and they basically said, if we ain't getting hit by the hurricane, you're closing. So <laughs> yeah. um, They're pretty adamant about closing yeah, things yeah. here. Yeah, yeah they, 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 they were, don't mess around. Yeah, they were um, pretty immovable about that. One yeah. thing I found is you know if you pay cash for the house it's probably a totally different process if you have a mortgage it's a different process they uh sometimes i wonder if the right hand speaking to the left hand we've been here two months mm -hmm. and have not received a bill for amenity fees and called the cdd office to ask them hey when are you going to bill us for amenity fees because i don't want to get a bill 
you know, right. you owe us 500 bucks for amenity fees. Um, can't really get a straight answer. So we're just waiting on a bill for amenity fees. Then once we moved in, I think we were here two weeks, mm -hmm. we got a bill from Sumter County for property taxes. And uh, my understanding was that was supposed to be taken care of in the closing as well because we weren't here. So the previous owner had to take care of the property taxes. Can't get a straight answer on that either. And uh, so First Citizens Bank, and I will mention their name, uh, you have to stay on them. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but you have to stay on them. They are not proactive. Um, with that said, we are still checking with the Sumter County website to see if our taxes have been paid. Mm -hmm. So there's little things that, you know, have to be done. Um, these things have to be done in other places too. So don't think you're moving to Disneyland where, you know, they're just going to hand you the keys and everything's taken care of. It's just like moving anywhere else. You have uh, little nitpicky things that have to be taken care of. Your car insurance uh, will probably go way up. Ours almost doubled. Wow. <clears throat> um, simply because of the area. There are some companies that will not finance a home here. Uh, I've dealt with USAA for 30 years. They will not uh, uh, give me... Uh, car insurance. Well, they give you car insurance. They won't give you a uh, home insurance. Home insurance, insurance. that's it. Right. So you will deal with the village's homeowner's insurance and they are brokers that deal with companies here in Florida. So that will also be more expensive than probably what you're used to. So your car insurance will go up, your homeowner's insurance will go up, your taxes, depending on where you're coming from, will probably go up. So that with the amenity fees and then your mortgage, if you have a mortgage, uh, you can expect to pay some money to move down here. With that said, um, it's not a bad thing, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. Now, if you move to the coast, uh, either the east or west coast of Florida, you also got to deal with hurricane insurance, right. which is astronomical, and you don't have to deal with that here. So, just some things to think about. But there's no state tax. So. No state tax. <laughs> no state tax. Did kind of our, did our car insurance go up? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Our homeowners did. Our, our homeowners insurance. Uh, Compared to Indianapolis, we're about well, the same. was cheaper. So I think a lot depends it. on where you're from and right. you know, what you're used to. And, exactly. Well, and probably you know if you got a million dollar car, <laughs> as he does, he drives an army tank. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> no, he doesn't. And my golf cart is a Rolls Royce, and that is expensive. Let me yeah. tell you, <laughs> it's like sixty bucks a year. <laughs> Okay, so that's all the frustrating things that you had to deal with. Basically, was the financing of the house that was. Well, I think at this point we've we've been here two months, and right now I, I would say that's probably the frustrating part. And one of the things that we didn't have to deal with is we didn't buy a new house where we went in and went, oh, let's go change, let's put in ceiling fans, let's put in solar tubes, let's put let's acrylic get ahead of windows, ourselves. any yeah. of that stuff. This is my so, interview. Don't get ahead of yourself. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Skip, but no, but so far only. Two months in, I would say, yeah, that's it. What's your activities right now? I don't have any yet. See, that's the biggest complaint that I hear in the winter from new people. Seriously. Mm -hmm. They hear about all these activities. Right. And they seem to think they can willy-nilly just walk in and do an activity because it's, uh, it's here. Most activities are done in rec centers or right. something like that. And they only allow so many people in that rec center right. because of fire marshal laws right. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they find out that I want to do the Zumba, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> And they can't get in because it's right. full. Right. You know, and they get frustrated about that kind of thing because they didn't know. Well, I think that one of the things that you have to take time to figure out is what are the things that you want to be involved in. And that's going to take some time to insert yourself into. When you're um, still working. And yeah, I still, still work. work. Yeah. Exactly. That's one of the things I've noticed that there's a lot of clubs that I'm very interested in, such mm -hmm. as riding. I would like to really work on my riding. I want to... Mm -hmm. Uh, finish up a, a, a book that I'm writing about my mom's life, and then I have a children's story I'd like to write. But all those book clubs meet during the day. You need to talk to one of my subscribers. Okay. That's She's an we'll author do. of children's books. Then you have to hook me up. I can't remember her name. That's okay. She'll hit. <laughs> she she will leave this. a comment below. Yes. 
She'll hook me up. Yeah, she'll hook you up. But uh, but those clubs meet during the day, and I work during the day, so I can't do that. But I, something I found very interesting was they, there was a book expo at Eisenhower this past weekend. And, of course, I went because I'm very interested in books and reading and all that stuff. And one of the authors that I met there was telling me that her parents live here. And, of course, her dad golfs, and so he became involved in golfing right away. But it took her mother two years to figure out the clubs and the activities that she wanted to be involved in. She loves it now. She's mm -hmm. been here about 10, 15 years. But it took some time. And so that's what I expect is that it's going to take some time for us to figure I gotta out. i got to ask a dumb question. Why does it take her two years to figure out what she wants to do? I think... Probably uh, over scheduling, kind of like a child. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, over scheduling mm -hmm. and then not having enough time. I've heard that before. And so I think that's probably <laughs> she what it that. is. Every day of the week was doing something. Right. She was never home to cook me dinner. Oh. That's what her main job Whoops. is. Bad Sue. Bad <laughs> Sue. <laughs> but Don't no. send me any emails what I just said. <laughs> But that's one of the things I we actually talked about. It's sort of like having a child and extracurricular activities that you can't, you don't want to over schedule the kids because they've got yeah. way too much to do. It's the same thing with adults here. Right. You don't want to over schedule yourself. Like there were so many things that I wanted to do that I didn't have access to before. Right. I, and I, I, it just didn't dawn on me, you know, don't get too many of these things going at right. once because I, eventually I found I didn't have any. Just downtime, exactly. And so I had to I had to pull back a little bit on it. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think a lot. Of, I think taking two years is probably pretty wise, because I, I wasn't aware of everything that was out there. There's right. a lot that I knew about, but some things I didn't know about. Right. And I, I just recently found out about a few things that I wished I'd have done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as far as people, you know, who want to continue to work <clears throat> um, in a part-time capacity or, or whatever it may be, I was able to find a job in three days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can work with the CDDs, you can work with the villages, you can work outside of the villages. So whatever you want to do, I mean, you know, it's just uh, a matter of how how busy you want to be. Right. Um, how involved you want to be. Uh, neighbors have invited us to different clubs and all kinds of stuff. And it's, uh, I mean... If you want to be busy, there's a million things to do here. So, and there's always things to do on the weekends with the the marts, uh, the uh, markets, and the um, uh, special activities. I mean, next weekend, if you like model trains, they got model trains going on for four days at one of the rec centers, which. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd love to go see that. They had a book fair last weekend. They they have festivals, have festivals all the time. All Anything the time. for a party. So <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. You know, I, I don't care where you live or where you have lived. There's no place like this as far as uh, activities. things to do. Activities, yeah, yeah. yeah. tons of. Them. There's and a myriad. That's what brings people in. Yeah. 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 Okay, getting on with the prices of stuff. People are always sending me emails about how much does groceries cost, how much does electric cost. How much is your property taxes? Can I afford to live there? You coming from Chicago, you coming from Alabama. Alabama. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys can compare two different areas actually. Compare the grocery prices and stuff like that from there to here is much different. Um, from Alabama, I don't think the grocery prices are that different at all. I think one of the, the biggest changes for us is the tax structure for groceries. Uh, they charge tax on some things and they don't charge tax on other things, but I don't think our grocery bill is really any different. I think the only thing that we, we're finding a little difference is, is that when you move, you're not taking everything with you because you got to empty out your freezer, your refrigerator and mm -hmm. all this stuff and your mm -hmm. pantries. And so it's coming down here and restocking. Starting over. Starting yeah. over, exactly. I don't have this or I don't have that, which I always had there. So it's a matter of restocking. But grocery prices, I haven't, I haven't found that much difference in at all. What about you? Well, coming from Alabama, where we lived in Alabama, I didn't live in Chicago. I ain't lived in Chicago since I was 17. But uh, the grocery prices here are comparable with most mm -hmm. of the southeast. With the exception is there's no state tax. Yeah. So that helps out greatly. Um, Alabama had a 10% state tax on groceries. Mm -hmm. On um, everything. So, you know, it's 10% on every grocery bill that we don't pay here. All right. Or do you think about the house prices between here and, say, Alabama 
comparable, close, a little more? It's it's more here. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of did some comparison shopping, of course, when I, we were putting our house on the market, trying to figure out what kind of prices we should look at. And you can buy probably a 2,000 square foot home uh, with a little bit of, a, I'm not talking about a bunch of land, but you know, a little bit more acreage, bigger than the lots here, yeah. uh, for probably, what, 180,000, maybe mm -hmm. 200,000 if you really want to go up there. So here, you know, it, it depends on what you want. The thing about the villages that we've noticed is that it's, it seems like there's a price structure here. It may be a, an unwritten price structure, but all the houses are going to be in a certain price range of what you're looking at. If you're looking at villas or courtyard villas or that or whatever it is. So yeah, there's going to be a difference in the houses. The thing that I am really, that I really like is that because we had an older house, um, this is a much newer house. This is only six years old is our utility bill is so much less than it was so much less than Alabama. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I think Sue told said that you said the electric was a lot cheaper here than Indianapolis. Yeah, and I said since we're totally electric, you know, we had gas and electric up there, mm -hmm. and I said we can eliminate the gas bill, and the right. electric actually is cheaper here than what it was up there. Yeah, our our electric bill, which everything here is electric, there's no gas, mm -hmm. not in this area anyway. But um, some some areas have natural gas, but I don't think anybody uses gas here for heating. I could be wrong, but I don't believe so. Um, is much less. Uh, our average utility bill in the winter time in northern Alabama for a 2,000 square foot home would run over $300. Here, mm -hmm. maybe a hundred bucks. Yeah. Well, and even <clears throat> with running the air conditioner all the yeah. time, it still is lower than, than what our Absolutely. Are. Yeah. Um, as far as the home prices go, <clears throat> that's going to depend where you're coming from. If you're coming from mm -hmm. New York or uh, New Jersey or wherever, this place is a lot cheaper. If you're coming from North Alabama, it's it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's what you're accustomed to. What you're used um, to. And you're paying for the lifestyle here. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's what all the advertisements say, yeah. the lifestyle, and that's the truth. But you have to look at the square footage. I mean, everywhere you, you buy a realty, it's based on square footage. How much square footage is the house going to cost? Okay, that's going to be the, the, the house cost. That's how much I'm going to pay for the home. Um, those are going to be pretty much locked in stone. Because uh, if you don't pay for it, somebody else will. Mm -hmm. The um, demand here is so much more right. Absolutely. than where I come from. It's mm -hmm. not negotiable in a lot of cases. No. And new homes are not negotiable at all. Take so, it or leave it. Yep. Pretty much. <clears throat> it's one of these areas you you come here for a specific reason. Uh, you're going to pay for it. It's not outrageous, but it is a little bit more than some areas and a little bit less than some areas. Mm -hmm. um, the I think everybody gets bent out of shape. I know we did. Is trying to figure out on. Um, how much is it going to cost me to live in the villages? Okay, you got to, if you don't have a mortgage, you don't have a mortgage. So you're going to have amenity fees, you're going to have utilities, and well, other than that, trash. Well, yeah, that's in your amenity fees and yeah. your utility fees. So you're going to have amenity fees and your utility fees. If you got a mortgage, you're going to have a mortgage. Other than that, you're not going to have anything else. Uh, the amenity fees, there's been talk about that. <clears throat> um, we closed after the 1st of October. We closed on the 10th of October. So we were affected by the new amenity fees at $159 a month, um, which is kind of strange because we were actually supposed to close prior to the 1st of October, but the owners of the, the home wanted to push it back because their home couldn't close. Uh, but at that time, we had no idea that they were going to raise the amenity right. fees, which is a little bit of sore spot as far as I was concerned. Um, they could have mentioned that and they didn't. Uh, so we were, you know, for 14 bucks extra a month, I, I don't lose sleep over that. But the amenity fees are at 159 a month. The uh, <clears throat> um, homeowners association or property owners association is quibbling with the developers on that right now. 
but um, the process of buying here is like most places you get a uh, an outside real estate agent um, who can sell you pre-owned properties they can't sell you new properties or you can get a villager real estate agent or salesperson they don't call themselves real estate agents uh, who can sell you new pre-owned or uh, new properties but they can only sell you pre-owned properties that are listed through the village. All right, now you're recording again. Okay, come back over and finish your story. <laughs> okay. Wow. Now you are going to have to edit. Tech Giants, we aren't. <laughs> so um, to continue uh, what I was talking about, we had a, a, an agent <clears throat> that um, she, had, she was a real estate agent in uh, different areas of the country before she moved here. Her and her husband are both agents here in the villages and they're both very successful, very nice people. The difference that I found buying here in the villages as opposed to buying real estate anywhere else is uh, you really need to ask questions. And some of the answers that we got, I would just say we're less than truthful. This is where you have to do your homework. Uh, and watch Skip. <laughs> and watch Skip. Uh, one of the examples I'll give you is uh, when we asked our particular agent whether there was an issue with blasting down in the funny area, she uh, said point blank, there is no blasting. I have no idea about any blasting. There is blasting down there. We did not buy in the Fenny area. Um, it, it is more when you're dealing with the villages, agents, uh, or salespeople, they are motivated to sell their homes. There's nothing wrong with their homes. There's nothing wrong with anything in the villages. You're not going to, to find crazy things down here when you move in. It's, it's just like buying a home anywhere else. But you have to do your due diligence. Don't expect them to uh, be forthright in everything they tell you. Don't expect them to volunteer information. And I, I don't expect any real estate agent to do that because their business is to sell homes. So with that said, um, it, it's uh, just you, you have to do your due diligence, you know. So who do does your homework? <laughs> who does the grocery shopping? We both do. We both you do. do. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the locations and how many grocery stores we have around here? I think we got quite a few. Absolutely we got we got quite a few. We were used to Publix at home. Publix was just right down the road. Uh, we have a couple of Publixes to choose from. Uh, I used to do Win Dixie when I lived in another part of the country. I used to shop there all the time, so I was actually pleasantly surprised to see another one, which is just right over there, very mm -hmm. close by. And then you got Walmart. Yeah, thing. What, what's it called? Yeah. The neighborhood store. Neighborhood store, mm -hmm. something like that. And it's actually larger some of, than some of the old Walmart buildings, which are some are still in uh, in use. But mm -hmm. it, it's a very nice store, very clean. Have you ever been to New Aldi's? Haven't been oh, to the yeah. New Aldi's yeah. yet. Not here. I haven't either. Surprise. <laughs> well, Aldi's is a German grocery store. Did yeah. you know that? I don't shop. <laughs> uh, well, then, then you wouldn't know that. And there's another reason why I haven't been there. You know what it is? You can't, can't get there in your golf cart. I can't get there in my golf cart. <laughs> These guys do watch my videos. That's yeah. right. We do know that. <laughs> well, I know within where we live here, within five minutes, we can be at a Winn-Dixie. Within five minutes, we're at a Publix. Publix. Mm -hmm. Within eight minutes, we're at another Publix. Within eight more minutes, we're at a, a Walmart neighborhood grocery. Um, there's Lake Deaton, there's Pinellas Plaza, there's uh, mm -hmm. um, Colony, there's Brownwood. So as far as shopping goes, and they're all reachable in a golf cart. So, you know. Why are you can, shopping? Yeah, you can shop till you drop around here. <laughs> <laughs> so the shopping in general that you guys have done a lot, I know. The furniture shopping, mm -hmm. the 
you guys got plantation shutters installed. Right. Um, I don't know what all you guys shop for, but the shopping in general, would you find it to be a good experience? I mean, people treated you well? They didn't treat you well? No, we've actually had, uh, to be perfectly honest, we haven't done as much to the house as some other people may have done because the previous owners did a lot. But we did do the plantation shutters, we did the blinds and the lanai. Mm -hmm. um, we're thinking about replacing some of the light fixtures with fans. Mm -hmm. But the shopping experience has been very satisfactory. Uh, when we did the blinds, the guy came out. He was super nice. It was a family business. and Blinds uh, for less. Bl yeah, blinds for less. And installed, and it was a great experience. Mm -hmm. uh, the furniture company, we got Who did our, your Spanish uh, or the, uh, what do you call these things? The shutters. The shutters. shutters. Who blinds, blinds for less. less. Blinds are less. For less. For less. Nestor and Eduardo. Yeah, family-owned business. Okay. Family-owned business. And where they're located? Here in... Um, Somewhere. No, they're in Lady Lake. Oh, Lady Lake. Yeah. Lady Lake? We actually found them in the newspaper. Or Leesburg. One Leesburg, the yeah. We have Lady Lake or Leesburg. Okay. Um, but everybody has just been super nice, very friendly, um, very responsive. Good. So that's always a plus. Well, I found that most of the service that I've got, other than a few people that I've done business with before, Mm -hmm. And I've told you guys before, most of yeah. the service that I found has sucked. They say they'll show up at 8, they show up at noon. Yeah. They tell you they'll be there on Tuesday, they show up on Thursday. Yeah. Um, it's just been really, really bad. But the people that I have recommended for other people, like Romaldo for one, the driveway mm -hmm. guy. I'm not saying that driveway designs for everybody at all. You got pooters, you got all these other people that do all kinds of driveway design. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that if you tell Romaldo and he says I'll be there at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. he's there yeah. at 8 o'clock. Yeah. And that means a lot to me. Yeah, and absolutely. when it comes to like flooring, um, uh, there's some people that I had work for me that I wouldn't recommend. And there's people that I would. And like I've explained before, to me it's all about finish work. Mm -hmm. When you walk out that door, my house better look like a brand new house. I don't expect to see fingerprints on the wall. Yeah. Right. And, you know, that Footprints kind of Footprints on the floor. Yeah, right. and that's just me. So I'm not going to recommend somebody because they're cheaper knowing that you're going to have to repaint the room mm -hmm. when they leave. Yeah. Right. The, um, there's an abundance of contractors around here. And just like looking for a home in the villages, you have to do your due diligence. And there's so many uh, things that you can look at here. There's Talk of the Villages website. They list all the contractors and they have all the reviews on there. There's the Better Business Bureau. Mm -hmm. um, if you find a bad contractor, it's probably because you didn't do your homework. But I think most of them, just like anywhere else in this country, are people who are hardworking, want to do a good job, want to give you a fair price. The Villages is a bubble. They know everybody talks to everybody else. Yeah. So they don't want to do bad work and everybody says don't hire you know, alpha contracting because they're a bunch of idiots and this is what they do. Because it spreads by word of mouth like wildfire around here mm -hmm. and they know that. They want to do good work. But you have to also do your own due diligence. Yeah. We there are, but you didn't show up. So we ate it. No, so we ate she it. never sent me an email. <laughs> Last email I got from her, she said, I said, when do you want me to come over? And you said, as soon as I get this stuff in, I'll send you an email and let you know. And I said, okay. And I waited for a month and never got an email. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't put that off on me. <laughs> don't put that off on me. If you somewhere. ever want to get a hold of us, don't call, don't email, text. Him, him. Talk to him. Because I'm, my I'm, phone, I love my phone, but I've had issues with voicemail. And I get voicemails from three weeks ago. Or that just ago. pop up. Yeah. And we're like, from my right. son, from you, and other people. It's like, oh, you know, it's Saturday, and I'm like, okay, yeah. Saturday. I used to get a notice about voicemail, and now I don't. If I, I don't, don't pay either. attention, I don't see it. Until I have to check my yeah. voicemail every day. Yeah. I used to get a thing on my phone that said, you got a voicemail. Yeah. I don't get it. I can, I, tell you, I can tell you how to fix that. Get another phone? Let your voicemail box get full. Yeah. And then leave it full. Nobody can leave a voicemail anymore. Uh. I do that all the time. I leave it full. That way they're forced to call me back. Because I got yours, what, a couple days ago. Yeah. I said, shit, Skip called me on the 18th of November. Mm-hmm. And I had just got it. And I said, oh, man. I've been ignoring you before. I know how it is. <laughs> I wasn't ignoring you. I'm telling you. God's honest truth. Hey, if you uh, decide to do any activities down here, is there anything 
piqued your interest yet? Pickleball? Maybe? Actually, we're interested in bocce. Bocce? bocce? Yeah, yeah, that yeah. looks interesting. I did bocce. We, Here's the secret about bocce, I'll tell you right now. It looks like big marbles. Pick somebody that knows what the rules are about scoring. Okay. Everybody makes these rules. Oh, well, if you hit the white ball, that's that's a minus one. If you oh, hit the wall, well. that's, a, that's a two plus. If you if you ricochet and then get close to win. Yeah, that's crap. That's bullshit. We, now, we've read about the score. I've watched yeah. YouTube. Yeah. I, had, I had a guy I played with that actually knew the, the rules. Uh -huh. And after I played with him, it was simple. Yeah, yeah it and is. These other guys don't know the rules. No, they, they make up crap. One guy was telling me that you had to roll the ball below your knee. No. no. Another guy was telling me that you had to throw the ball halfway down first and then let it roll. That was the rule. No. And I just quit playing because it's like, man, these rules are ki are killing me. I can't. I can't. No, figure that's out. Yeah, that's simple, crap. Simple rules. If you go on YouTube and I watched, even Tom did a YouTube video with his dad on boxing. Tom or what? Yeah, we're recording. Mm. I did not know that. Did you see Tyler's bocce video on. with his know. dad? Oh yeah. That's yeah. how you do bocce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no, oh, if it hits the wall, blah, blah. Well, but on our, on our course here, if you've been to it, you'll see these little white lines on the side. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew they meant something. Yeah, But they I didn't do. know what they meant. Yeah. And then when the guy finally explained to me, I thought, well, that makes sense. Yeah. He's like, he was, it was goofy. It was just goofy People stuff. Make up. Up. Make People make up. You know, I quit rules. playing water volleyball because of goofy rules. Yeah. I used to enjoy water volleyball, and then it started, let me tell you how it started. I spiked the ball, and then the guy goes, I can't do that. The ball goes the other side, what are you talking about? Well, you're not allowed to spike the ball. Why not? That's what I said, why not? It's volleyball. We don't do that because everybody's elderly. We don't do that. <laughs> well, why don't they tell you that before you start? Well, I didn't know. Yeah. I guess they thought of it. And then it was my turn to serve. I'm going weeks later. We played twice a week. Right. So weeks later, I'm serving the ball. Then the guy says, we changed the rules now. He said, now, when you serve the ball, you're not allowed to hit it. You have to throw it over your head. What? Yeah. And you have to throw it to the last row, nobody up front. And you have to name the person you're going to throw the ball to. That's too much thinking. Why would you do any That's of that? That's what I said. I said, well, too much what, thinking. What, what are we doing? I'm here to enjoy myself. <laughs> yeah. It just got to the point, it doesn't even volleyball anymore. Yeah. It's not. Why don't we just toss it? And uh, two that's them. basically what we were yeah. doing. When you got to take notes, you know, oh, I can't do this. Yeah. <laughs> I did it for one summer, and then next year I told them to take me out. I'm not doing that anymore. But did anybody actually look up the rules? No. There is no rules for that. They make it up. They, they just make, make it, up. it up as they go. Yeah, as they go. If somebody's handicapped, they make a rule up to accommodate that person. Yeah. If somebody is really short, which that may sound stupid, but if you're uh, in the volleyball no, thing, you get up to the front row, the water. Yeah. Skip. Yeah. 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 I'm four foot yeah. eleven and seven eights. Yeah. So you'd be the person in the front row. You got people with snorkels. Yeah. yeah. That would so, be me. So they make accommodations for them, so they can't, you know. Oh, does that mean that we have somebody on the bottom that we're standing on or something? It's the rotation thing. Sometimes how you rotate, like this corner goes over here, this yeah. guy goes over here. So if you're really, really short, sometimes they don't make you go to the front row. They'll let you rotate just the first can't two. breathe. Yeah. The problem was I wasn't sitting there telling him you have to go over there. <laughs> yeah. So since you've been here for a while, this is the last question and we'll end this thing. Okay. And you've had a chance to play around. I know you still work full time. So you really work. haven't had a chance to go out and do much of anything, really. But is it what you expected? Close to what you expected? Better? Worse? It's different. It's different from what I expected. Living here and visiting here are two separate things. And I don't have enough experience under my belt yet to tell you, is it what I expected? I'm not sure yet. I don't okay. know. That's fair. Yeah. I know with me, it's it's exactly what I expected because before, well, we came down for many, many years before we actually bought even our first house here, is I was here enough to know, this goes back to a story, a short story. That's We're coming story. down like our third trip in this van, mm -hmm. bringing some minor stuff down. And we had told ourselves after the first trip, this is the last trip of this old van. We're getting rid of it and buying something different. Mm -hmm. And then trip number two came. And then trip number three came. Uh -oh. And I said, this is it. I'm not doing it anymore. This is the last trip in this old van and we're done. And and we're coming down in the middle of the night because I usually drive straight through. Right. I don't generally stop 
overnight. She's trying to get me to quit doing that. But anyway, she said, uh, she said, do you have any idea what you're going to do when we're finally down here full time? I said, well, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I've known for years exactly what I was going to do. I've got two activities in mind, and that's it for me. Anything else? I may try a card game in a neighbor's house. I may try this or that. But full time, I know two exact things I'm going to do. She said, what's that? I said, golf. I've been out of golf for 20 years. I always enjoyed it with my dad. I said, I want to get back into golf and drink beer. Now, that sound, I would have said golf and beer. Yeah, mm -hmm. that may sound stupid, but working in the trucking industry like I did, <clears throat> I was never allowed to drink. Mm -hmm. And I always enjoyed a good beer. And, and I didn't take a chance on anything. If we'd go out to a local restaurant, and if I had just one beer, I handed her a key. I wouldn't even drive the car home. I didn't want to take the chance. So the idea of me going down here and being able to drink three or four beers with the guys, mm -hmm. to me, that's a luxury because I was never allowed to do that before. And to this day, pretty much that's what I do. I go off and drink beer. Well, I've had three at your house. Very true. <laughs> Good thing we stopped that. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah. Right. Four. Four. <laughs> Means I'm right. And that's not golf. That's right. No, that's not golf. But no, I don't, I don't know yet. I know there's a couple of things I want to do, but until I'm not working full time anymore, I, I don't see myself getting steeped into those things. What right interest you? You surely got an idea. Um, yeah, I want to write. Right. Um, I would love to get back into my music again, if nothing else, just to do some songwriting with, with you know. So basically, no matter what it is, it's writing. Writing music, writing, writing yeah. books, writing yeah, this, writing, writing mm -hmm. that. I love to write. Yeah. And then the other thing that I have found, which uh, is really, <laughs> a lot of people would go, what? But there is actually a group down here dedicated to collecting vintage costume jewelry. And I oh, maybe. collect I costume jewelry. Idea. I love it. She might get the club for everything. I think there is just about. <laughs> yeah. And if there isn't, they will help you start one. Start one, absolutely. Our but neighbor, the mayor of Carbondale, as a matter of fact, I ain't put his video up yet, but the mayor of Carbondale decided he wanted his own, he wanted to join a Mercedes club oh. for, for antique Mercedes or basically any kind of Mercedes. Mm -hmm. But there really wasn't any here. Oh. So he started one. And it hasn't even been a year yet. He told me the other day he's got 100 members already. Wow. Mm -hmm. You start a club, man. They, they, they'll yeah. come. And you don't have to have them say it's No. It's oh. all about... Oh, it's, you can be a wannabe. Just, yeah, yeah, just car talk and drinking beer. Okay. <laughs> but, the, but those are the things I'm interested in. Chuck's probably interested in, in a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, wow. There's uh, so much... Uh, it, it's almost crazy. I mean, I wanted to go back to work for a little while, so I was able to find some part-time work through the CBD here, working at Eisenhower. Um, which to me is a good thing because that's a military rec center, more or less. So, uh, you know, to be able to talk to people, people come in and ask questions or whatever, I might be able to talk to them. And just the camaraderie of meeting people. And it's amazing, I can go around the villages, I can stop at the grocery store and they'll see my license plate or the cart plate or whatever and oh you retired from the army yeah how you doing you know oh i'm so and so and you, you talk to people and they're, they're everywhere um they have an excellent organization here villagers for veterans which helps uh the veterans uh some of the veterans around here um you know with all kinds of different needs so there's there's just not enough time really to get involved in everything you want to do. If you can't find something to do here, then it's your fault. That's um, true. I've always one, said that. Yeah, mm -hmm. one, one of my favorite things to do is just get in the golf cart and drive the pass because it is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we'll get out some mornings and go, hey, let's, you know, let's go just drive around. We'll get in the golf cart and get off of the roads and drive the golf carts. And you've got beautiful trees on both sides of you and yeah. the flowers and the flower arrangements and it's just gorgeous. I mean, I've never lived anywhere that was as beautiful as this and as well clean, clean, clean. well maintained. Uh, and that in and of itself, it, you know, is, it's not a hobby, but it'll sure take up a lot of your time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very um, serene. Um, I don't know, I just can't think of any place that I've ever been that you can't find uh, something to do or not to do and enjoy yourself. 
Do you so, need to be a millionaire to live here, you think? Uh, it would help. <laughs> <laughs> it would help greatly, but no, I'm not a millionaire. We're not millionaires. Uh, I'm retired from the Army. <clears throat> Sharon has a PhD in education. She works for the federal government. Um, she'll have a pension in a, a year or two. No, you don't have to uh, be a millionaire. Um, we sold a house in Alabama to come here, uh, which was not a very expensive home. So it's, it's not a matter of how much money you have, it's a matter of what you're looking for. Um, you know, Skip has said many times, uh, the, the first thing people buy is a palm tree. Now, we didn't have to buy a palm tree, so the first thing we bought was the golf cart. Right. And uh, the golf carts are more expensive than you think they are, so. They're little cars. Yeah. yeah. Get what you That's want. True. And uh, they are little cars, but they're a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, get the bucket seats with the seat belts. Yeah. And then tell them you want the speed limit raised, and they will do it for you. So. <laughs> That's against the law, by the way. No, it is, no, it's not. It's not against 20 the law. 20 mile an hour is the legal speed limit. I got to say that on this video. I'm not telling you you can't go over that, but 20 mile an hour is the legal speed limit. Yes, but when you get on the roads, the speed limit is 30. 20 for golf carts. Yeah. That's the law, Florida law. Well, he's right. So forget what I just said. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, seen the other day, so I'm going to have that written uh, written down the law on seat belts and, and evidently it's against the law to have seat belts in your cart in Florida. Really? Uh, because of it having the uh, racked up. I never heard or, of that. Okay. Well, okay. So I, you know, I don't know who this was. I well, read we have read all the things. We have evidently. We don't have a rag top. It's I mean, not a solid top. top. And so like I said somewhere along in the law it said that you weren't allowed to have have seat belts because of, of the. I think somebody just made that up. Well, it could be. I, I don't know. Half the carts around here's got seat belts in them. Yeah. Well, well, we yeah, had seat it. belts put in. Oh, yeah. yeah, we sure did. Seats put in. Well, when when he put it on there, it looked like you know it looked like a wall. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, we, we're going we to jail seat. anyway. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. it's either speeding in a golf cart or seat belts. We're going to prison. Yeah. So. But, but breaking. But yeah, we uh, we we put the good seats in there because I'm short mm -hmm. and I need to be able to push the seat all the way yes. up. Yes, so if you have a short wife when you move here, I you're going to get a have. golf cart, expect to spend another thousand bucks on adjustable <laughs> seats. Yeah. Put that in your yeah. budget. That's what we did, buckets with yeah. separate sliders. Yeah. Yep. They're not That's cheap. Yeah. But I don't rec I don't you know regret getting them either. They're I don't either. Everybody gets in my car and tells me how comfortable they yeah, are. Yeah, and ours is the same. Well, I've seen your cart, ours is the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's they're pimped out. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have the Bentley front or and the hot rod. Sometimes, you know, when we don't really, have, we, we're of modest means. We have Toyota vehicles, so we don't have Bentleys or Cadillacs. But when we want to feel important, we get in the golf cart. That's right. And we go downtown to the square, and we're pimped out. So That's an interesting question. Have you been to all three squares? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Which is your favorite? Do you have one? I know mine is definitely it like some, because, I love like some area. Yeah, yeah. Spanish Springs is so, it's kind of old. It's hard to get to from where we're at. Lake Sumter is, I love it. It's beautiful. But it's so crowded. It mm -hmm. is crowded. It is. Um, Brownwood is coming of age. They have some empty spaces, but they do have a lot of good places there. Mm -hmm. but the people are very nice. Any, any square you go to, everybody is so nice. And of course, Brownwood's so <clears throat> convenient. Yeah, to get to it there. is convenient. And I go to Crown, Brownwood probably more than anywhere because it's convenient. You know, one of the things that we don't talk about and that people really need to take into consideration is the safety factor here, how safe it is. Oh, yeah. Skip will read the news and tell you about child molesters on Lemon Loop. They're <laughs> here. They're here. It's a fact of life. I agree with them. These parents should not be taking these kids in. But it's not that bad. It's very yeah. quiet around here. It's very safe. Um, I turn on the news in the morning. They don't have villages news. So you turn on the news in the morning, you get the Orlando news. Shootings, murders. I'm so glad I don't live in the Orlando area. <clears throat> and that's one of the major factors of why we moved to the villages. 
And if you go on the National Crime Rating Statistics website, which is a government website, the villages is like zero. Very little crime. Very, compared very, to, very, very to most places. Yeah. And that was a big factor with us. So it's extremely safe here. Um, you know, people just, I, I, I don't know why anybody wouldn't move here. If you can get your head around the amenities fees, you get your head around how things are paid down here and it's not all that difficult, it's a great deal really. Yeah. And my wife can go out and walk in the evenings. I don't have to worry about her, you know, carrying her pistol, which she has a pistol. <laughs> carrying her pistol. You carry a pistol? <clears throat> Have you know the whole nine yards? To comment, you go. She has. A, she has a permit. That surprises me. I'm not scared by it. I'm just surprised. She me. has a permit. Yeah, I have but a permit. Have, have a you you don't have to feel afraid about anything. Yeah, I can walk so after dark. That that feeling of uh, after dark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she puts a coal miner helmet on. <laughs> uh, that, Common sense. Yeah, I that, just, that I feeling. Just, I just want to make sure that there's no gators behind me. Right. Yeah. Or anything like that. That, that okay. feeling of safety here is you, you can't put a, a value on that. Yeah, that's so. true. It's nice. Yeah. yeah, I think the safety factor here is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I just don't agree with some of the stuff parents are doing. That's all. That's that's my pet peeve. Well, I the, totally agree. Totally well, the agree. other thing that I want to add is you know don't be stupid. That if you lock your house wherever you are now, lock your house here. Yeah. Don't be dumb. Don't leave your it's keys in your car, your yeah, golf yeah. cart. Don't leave your purse in your golf cart. You won't do it at home. Why would you do it here? Right. Yeah. The myth of you're inside the bubble ain't necessarily yeah. mean you're protected. Yeah. Because the they do let idiots in here. Most of them are not villagers, but there are people that can get in here because it is an open community. Um, and most of the crime that's committed here is not committed by villagers. So, you know, with that in mind, I... I we looked at a lot of other areas to uh, move into, and safety was a big factor with us. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't find any place that had the, the rating that the villages had as far as crime, which is mm -hmm. almost nil. So yep. that's a big thing. Safety yep. factor, <clears throat> walkability factor, all of those yep. things. Yep. Yeah, that's why we moved here. I moved here so I could take my golf cart everywhere. Well, we another reason we moved here is because we, and I think a lot of people are like this, but you live in these communities and nobody goes outside. You don't know your neighbors. You don't. There's, what do you mean from where nothing. you used yeah. to live? From where oh, you we used to live. Way. I didn't know my neighbors. But here you have a chance to make a circle of friends, and that's yeah. one of the other reasons that we came is, well, of course, safety, mm -hmm. um, all of those things that Chuck talked about, but then also the opportunity to have a circle of friends and do things. We talked about that at Beer Day there, and I was talking to uh, Bruce, Bruce, I won't say last name, Bruce and Paul and, uh, and Tuck and some other ones. I was saying, you know, I lived in a house for, I don't know how many years we lived in that house, probably the longest house I ever lived in. Uh, 12 years. 12 years. Generally, after five or seven, I'm moving somewhere. Yeah. I get bored. It's the longest place we've ever lived. Yeah. And I said, you know, I, said, I see my neighbors, I'd recognize them. I'd wave mm -hmm. at them because I work nights, mm -hmm. they work days. Yeah. Okay. And on weekends, we were all mowing our grass and trimming our hedges, and we didn't really have time to, you know, socialize. And I said, down here. Count the John Deere's. <laughs> yeah. And I said, down here, I said, I, I probably know more people just in my neighborhood than I've ever known in my whole life. Mm -hmm. yeah. That could be a good or a bad thing, but, but it's a thing. Yeah. Well, I'm just Sue just got a text. So we're going to go. We got new neighbors that moved next door to us, you mm -hmm. know, where Donna used to live. So we're all having a party over there to uh, welcome our new neighbor to the... Awesome. So a big pot of chili or something, I don't know what it is. Yeah, Paul and Nancy are... Chili party. Yeah, okay. they're not able to, they're having a welcome party next week, but yeah. Paul and, and Nancy aren't able to go, so they're having chili tonight to uh, excellent with the new neighbors. Yeah. So down here, that's one thing that I've learned. Give them an excuse to make up a party, <laughs> oh, yeah. and it's right. gonna happen. Right. <laughs> like when you retire, retirement party. Right, exactly. Big retirement party. Not gonna have to work tomorrow. Yeah. So when's the open house party? Uh. <laughs> we'll I'm just know. joking. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. You know <laughs> this was it. Oh, oh this is there it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, I want to thank Chuck and Sharon both for letting us into his house and invade their privacy. And um, I, this, none of this was rehearsed, other than my questions I asked. They gave you the answers right off the. Uh, 
Yeah, that's it. There's, there's the questions. But, oh, I did have one more thing to ask you, wasn't it? Landscape job. You got a landscape job. Oh, yeah, we up. do. We have a landscape job coming up. Um, we, Who did you go with and why? We went with Village Palms. Um, they came out and took pictures of the house and then actually put those pictures in the CAD system. I saw that pictures. That was pretty cool. Wasn't that cool? It was. And then it showed what our house would actually look like with the type of landscaping that we requested. So one of the things that we wanted to have done was to have more native plants. Uh, there seems to be a lot of uh -huh. northeastern mm -hmm. plants that you would find like the holly and the box mm -hmm. and things like that <laughs> and junipers and so we really wanted a more authentic landscape and so they came up and they gave us a really good price and we're going to have a landscape job and the really cool thing about it is that they're going to be able to get it in two to three, get it done in two to three days, and we'll have landscaping before Christmas. Yeah. One thing I have noticed down here when you go with the better companies mm -hmm. is how fast they can get a job done. Up north, it'd take them a month to get um, you know, yeah. a job yes. like this done. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of the dirt, I don't know. I come down here and they, my landscaping, which isn't probably extensive as yours, they got mine done in a day. And then they came back the next day for maybe an hour mm -hmm. to clean up, basically. And that was it. They, they were done and out of there. You have to let us know, you know, yeah. what, you, what you think. Yeah, we're going to do an uh, after. You you haven't seen the picture now, what it looks like now. And I'm mm -hmm. going to come over and do an after when they get done so you can see how impressive your house can look with the proper landscape. Right. Right. And we never had Village Palms do anything for us yet, so... We were, yeah. really, we were really <laughs> impressed with the way that they handled it. They came in, they, they were here on time. When they said we're gonna be Absolutely. here at a certain time, yeah. they were here. Uh, he came out, he talked to us. What is it that you're looking for? And the owner mm -hmm. talked to us. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't one of his employees. Him and his okay. wife owned the business. It's a family owned business. Mm -hmm. right. So he was out here and you know, he said, boom, let's talk on, what was it, Saturday at 10 o'clock. Yeah. We got there. Saturday at 10 o'clock, went to the office, totally professional. Yeah. He said, I got all this done. He had the estimate, mm -hmm. an itemized estimate. He had the CAD drawings, everything. I was like, wow. Oh, he had a, a TV, probably probably a 55 inch television there in the conference room. Yeah. And he put all the drawings there. What well, was so cool, of course, with any of this landscape, software that you get mm -hmm. is that he was able to move plants around, replace trees, show us how it was going different to look, trees, different, different angles, yeah. all yeah. kinds of stuff. It was See, that was worked really for cool. a guy like me because I can't envision this stuff. Yeah. yeah. Can you? No. Can no. you? Do you have that building Some, or something and decide that this needs to be gray? Sometimes I can, but it, it, sometimes it's hard to get past what's already there. Mm -hmm. and. And that was one of the things I think I had a hard time with. So, so we're going to have a water feature. I mean, we actually have the fountain out there now, but it's going to be in a different place. And so, before Christmas, we're going to have new landscaping. So does that mean they're going to add more electrical plugs outside? Also? Yes. Yes. They will. So and, lighting. Mm -hmm. and lighting. And lighting. Lighting. Well, I'll plugs. be curious to see what it is because yeah. usually we we recommend people that does things to our house because mm -hmm. we know what kind well, of. We know what kind of work they do. Right. Yeah, so I, I'm. So. I'm Oh, yeah. But the village's palms has been here for a long, long time, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they're not a newbie around here, right? Um, and they're going to be here for a lot longer too, with all the building going on. Right. They're not going anywhere. And we did, you know, just like buying the house, we did our due diligence and and went online and uh, looked at a bunch of different places and, and read the reviews. So just like anything else, do your homework. Yeah, um, Yelp is key. Go to Yelp, look up the reviews. Also take it with a grain of salt. But, and yeah. go to the Battle of Indus Bureau yeah. and see if they have complaints okay. or whatever. And listen to Skip. Yeah, and listen yeah. to Skip. <laughs> and the funny thing was, <clears throat> when I was talking to uh, Derek, who's the owner there, uh, I said, you know, I got a friend of mine who oh, yeah. may want to do a before and after video. I said, I have to talk to him. And uh, he said, really, who's this guy? And I said, Skip Smith. And he says, hmm. So he went on the computer <clears throat> while we're standing there and he started looking at your videos <laughs> oh god and i said there's the man <laughs> that's the man he said so you think he'll come out and do a video i said no well, i have to talk to him i don't know but uh you know so i said he he's got a lot of pull with the uh, villages so you may want to <laughs> do a damn good job on our place <laughs> i have no pull with the villages at all 
Matter of fact, I don't think a developer even likes me. <laughs> With his audience, let me call With his audience. audience. Okay. Let's, let's, let's yeah, call attention because they know you don't okay. lie. I think my audience listens to a little bit. Yeah. Because, uh, and as you can be a witness, I don't set nothing up. I just kind of have He sure don't. He flies by the seat of his pants. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I, you're getting the, the information the from raw. these people, the way they see it. It's raw and unfiltered. The good, the yes. bad, and the ugly. The good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, we're going to get out of here. I'm going to do an after when they get the uh, Village of Palms out here. I might come out here and try to record a little bit of the process, mm -hmm. and then we'll get an afterwards of what it looks like, and you'll be impressed about how good landscaping can really make your, That's right. your whole lifestyle change. Yes. And we want the good and the bad. And we're looking forward to having our oases out there. Oh, yeah. So that come springtime, well, not even springtime, yeah. just when it's warm. Go out there and enjoy it. That could be next that week. Could be next <laughs> week. Really, you know, really what I'm kind of looking for is something like Hugh Hefner would have. Oh. So we're looking for a Hugh Hefner You do. You've got a sexy girl. girl. I know. I know. I know but we don't have landscape. So. Yeah, we're going to have a landscape. <laughs> We've got to complete. Got to have your grotto, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Although I don't think I'll fit in that fountain. <laughs> I'm not trying. I'm, I'm not, You're not even going to go there, no, are you? Go there. I'm not even going to go there. Matter of fact, we cut a video this morning about our t-shirts. By the way, they're for sale. Watch the video. Um, has it <laughs> complete with coffee stains if you would like. No, I didn't have a coffee stain when I cut the video, and Sue said something about it, and I said. They don't care. <laughs> so I, cut, I said something out there and I look at it and I go, I may have to cut that out. I'm not sure. Because I said, what I said was, and I wasn't trying to be mean, I said, well, I didn't order very many small or medium because I just figured most people later in life are not that small or medium anyway. Most people gain weight when they get older. Should I cut that out? <laughs> yes. Let's just say speak for yourself, okay? Because yeah. I don't want a large. All I know is I weighed 145 my whole life. Look at me now, I'm all the way up to 165. Well, God, you must have been a bean pole. Jeez. 165? Somewhere in that area. <laughs> Choose about what I am. Yeah. <laughs> That's not even close. <laughs> Maybe. Go ahead and correct him, Sue. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to get out of here and get this thing together. I'm going to make it one video. It's going to be a long one, but you're going to hear the whole thing because I don't want people to accuse me of cutting stuff out and putting in what I want to put in because I'm not doing that. So I'm going to get out of here and as I always say at the end of the videos, see you on the other side. That's it. Bye y'all. <laughs>